You know, after you get a camera for a while, you start thinking like, why am I doing this? Is there an advantage to doing what I'm doing? I'm talking about shooting in RAW. On most cameras, you have the option when you're shooting in RAW, shooting in 12-bit or shooting in 14-bit. If I'm shooting landscapes, then I'll shoot in 14-bit. The differences between 14-bit and 12-bit is that the amount of colors you capture is more than double and I'll put the differences here. My question to you is, can you see the difference? Even if you're pixel peeping, can you see the difference? And I've been reading some of the forums and some of the photographers say, well, I've tried it and the only difference I've really found when I'm pixel peeping is the shadows or if my image is well underexposed that it's harder to grab out the shadows because 14-bit, you just get so much more information than then. 12-bit. But is that really of concern? Do we really pixel peep our wildlife photos? Now the most I might zoom in is 50%. I just want to see if the bird is in nice focus. I'm satisfied if the image is focused at 50%. I'll stop. I'm not going to keep zooming in and oh yeah I can see a little bit of grain. I'm just happy at 50%. There's no need for pixel peeping, especially if you're just posting it on social media. Now I'm just talking about us, normal people, going out photographing for wildlife. Because if you're a professional photographer, you're most likely going to shoot in 14-bit. Let's just talk about us. Because I'm just a regular photographer. Sure, I do tutorials, but I don't class myself as a professional wildlife photographer. Let's talk about 12-bit and 14-bit. Because here is the advantage for me of shooting in 12-bit, and that is frame rate on my Nikon Z6 II and the Z6, the Z7, we have a few different shutter modes that we can choose. We can have single point, which we'd never use if we're wildlife photography. We can have continuous low and we can program it from let's say two frames per second to a maximum of 5.5 frames per second. In continuous high, we have 5.5 frames per second. In continuous high extended, you can get around 11, 12 frames per second. I've been very happy with that. A couple of days ago when I was trying this, I put it into 12-bit and it blew my mind. The speed that I could capture action. This is great. The Z6 II teamed up with the Nikon 200-500, which is a slow focusing lens at f5.6 it slows you down. So are all the photos in focus? And is it worthwhile going down to 12-bit? Because sure, I could get more frames per second, but if those photos are out of focus, what's the point? So today, this is what I've been doing. I've been going around taking photos. There is a beautiful little kingfisher here, and I'm gonna show you the difference. I'm gonna set up at 12-bit first, and you're gonna hear the speed of the shutter because I'm in continuous high extended and then I'll put it to 14 bit. This looks like a forest kingfisher. While he's there, I'm going to go into DX mode because I shoot a lot in DX mode. This is where I could see a lot of difference because I'm cropped in. So instead of 24 megapixels, I'm only using 12. I'm at 1 2000 second f5.6. Listen to that shutter. Now let's go to 14 bit. Can you hear the difference? There's a huge difference, isn't there? The speed of the frame rate is just incredible. Now, if I'm shooting in JPEG between 12 and 14 bit, that's not gonna make any difference at all. You understand that? This is just in RAW. So here are four images of this little forest kingfisher. They were taken in DX mode. I use DX mode quite a bit when I photograph birds, if they're far from me or if the bird is small like this kingfisher. This is the 12-bit image of the forest kingfisher. This is the 14-bit of the forest kingfisher. So from here on in, the photos are just cropped to fit on the screen side by side. The ISO was 4000. Now I've cropped these images in quite a bit so that the grain, the noise in this image can be seen. And you can see between the 12-bit version and the 14-bit that there is a slight difference where the 12-bit you can see slightly more noise in the background. But after using Topaz Denoise, these images are just about 
even. It would be very hard for you to choose which one is the 12-bit and which one is the 14-bit. Now the following two images are the images that I took at two stops underexposed. So this is the 12-bit image, this is the 14-bit image. And you'd see the ISO 500. Now here is the images of the two stop underexposed brought up to the same exposure as the images that were correctly exposed. So these are still two stops underexposed and all I've done in Lightroom is increased my exposure by two stops. All the editing is the same. 12-bit file has a little bit more grain or noise in the background. Now here is the difference with Topaz denoise between the 12 and the 14-bit. And you can see there is very little difference now once I use Topaz denoise. And if you don't have Topaz denoise, I recommend this plugin for Adobe Lightroom. And on the left is the 12-bit image correctly exposed and the 12-bit image that was two stops underexposed when I took it. The two stop underexposed image was increased by two stops in Adobe Lightroom. Then I used Topaz denoise. And you would be very hard pressed to point out which is the image that is correctly exposed and which of the images is two stops underexposed when you're looking at these because the noise in the background is very similar. I have found that whether I'm shooting in 12-bit or 14-bit, I see no real difference in the files. So for me, I will now be using 12-bit for my wildlife photography. What about if we're using silent photography? Because in silent photography, we lose frame rate. Am I going to get more frames per second because if I was using silent photography at 14-bit, I was only getting around 8.5 frames per second. So let's see if I get more frames per second in 12-bit. This is continuous high extended, 12-bit with silent photography on. Now we're silent. Of course, we can't hear it. I'm going to put the differences here between 12-bit and 14-bit in silent photography. I want to show you some examples that I took here this morning. This is why I brought my tripod here. I wanted to have the photo in 12-bit and 14-bit, but I want to look and see whether they're in focus. And I will put down here how many photos I took, how many were in focus, and how many were out of focus in 12-bit compared to the 14-bit files, because this is a key test. If there's more photos out of focus, then is there really a point in going to 12-bit? Because the Z6 II isn't the fastest in focus, especially with a lens like the 200-500. I really want to show you all these different samples. This first set of 40 images of Kingfisher photos were taken in 12-bit DX, 38 in focus, 2 not in focus. But remember here, the camera is on a tripod. The bird wasn't moving much, so I was expecting a very high amount of photos to be in focus. This set of 40 images of the Kingfisher were taken in 14-bit, 38 in focus, 2 not in focus. Now this set of 40 images of these little Corellas fighting were taken in 12-bit FX, 36 were in focus, 4 not in focus. And even though the birds were moving quite a bit, I got a very high rate in focus in 12-bit. 40 images were taken of these little Corellas in 14-bit FX mode, 37 in focus, 3 not in focus, even though the birds were moving quite a bit. Now this set of 40 images of this white ibis standing on top of a tall dead tree were taken in 12-bit DX mode, but in silent photography mode. 36 of them were in focus, 4 were out of focus. So all the previous photos were taken on a tripod so I had a very good advantage of getting the birds in focus. But this 30 image set of this Royal Spoonbill that took flight just in front of me were taken handheld. And I was able to track it with my camera in 12-bit FX mode. 24 photos were in focus, 6 were not in focus. And this was mainly due that I just couldn't keep up with how the bird took off because it took off away from me, but then banked to the right very sharply to go behind a big clump of dead trees. And this is what it looked like in real time. So these images that you saw taken in 12-bit and 14-bit, whether in DX mode or in FX mode, proves to me that the 12-bit raw mode is the mode that I will be using from now on for my wildlife photography because there is very little difference between the 12-bit and the 14-bit mode when it comes to whether the images are in focus or whether they are 
out of focus. I'm very pleased with the 12 bit files. So thanks for watching. Like always, if you want to discuss 12 or 14 bit, you have any comments or you've got some questions about this, leave it in the comment box below and I'll answer your questions. Have a good day and I'll see you next time.